And what do you believe sets uh, malware bytes apart from your competitors? Because you mentioned there uh, you, you're playing in the SMB space. You're not really interested in mid-market or enterprise. But if you are playing that SMB space and that MSP space, what sets you out from your competitors, do you believe? Yeah. So this is easy. This is, I'll, I'll tell you very candidly, why we're winning in this space in particular. And I'll tie it into one view because one view is MSP world and MSP world is my purview. Um, it's the single single pane of glass management, right? So it's an easy button system. You don't have to be an IT administrator or systems admin to learn it, right? You can learn it out of the box. It is out of out of the box of efficacy. You have a diversity of modules and add-ons, right? At your at, so it's, it's future proofed your ability to sell long term with us to whoever your SMB clients are. You have all of the major integrations, right? So we have all the major integrations with the RMMs, the PSAs. The marketplaces from Kaseya to Atera to Pax8 that fits into your existing, you know, business strategy. Most of them have an account with, you know, the big three. And then on top of all of that, it's kind of the cherry on top. We're priced competitively for small business, right? We're not priced at the enter enterprise level protection level. We're not we're not priced that way. We're priced for small business and MSP focused small business. Um, therefore, you're getting enterprise grade cyber protection, right? But in an easy button way, diversity of modules with all the integrations that you currently use. You know, that that in itself, like those four things are a hell of a value proposition uh, when, we're, when we're talking to you. And that's one of the reasons why this program, this MSP program in particular, is uh, growing at such a, a fast rate right now. And genuinely, um... Brian, how, how do you see the channel maturing over the next sort of, sort of 20, 12, 24 months? Do you see it? You know, you mentioned there about you're going down a more of a channel model now, or channel first model, et cetera. So do you see this as the biggest opportunity? Do you see this as a, the, the channel is going to be maturing for you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think this is, again, the reason why from top down, from our CEO on down, this is the strategy. It's MSP and SMB. Uh, the three statistics are the ones that I usually reference uh, when I talk about the future of the channel. 61%, uh, 61% support number of SMBs were the target of a cyber attack in 2022. Okay, so that's only going to go up. You and I know that. 82% of ransomware attacks in 2022 were against companies with fewer than 1,000 employees. So that's the SMB market. So 82% of ransomware attacks are hitting SMB. And then 27% of small businesses with no cyber have no cybersecurity protections whatsoever. Okay, so they have no framework. There is no cyber cybersecurity framework. There is nobody at the company of these SMBs that's saying, all right, we need to identify, protect, detect, right? Protect, detect, respond, and recover. There is no strategy. Therefore, they're relying on an MSP to fill those gaps. And that's why I think there's there's nothing but growth in store, um, particularly for the channel, particularly for the SM MSP market, because, well, with those kind of statistics, 82% of ransomware attacks is hitting 1,000 1, employees and under. The market has to grow by default. Yeah, scary, actually, really scary, scary stats. It's crazy. It's yeah, absolutely scary crazy. Stats. Um, now, one of the questions we get asked on, on the show is how do we attract more young people to go into the into the industry, to the channel? Now, you you gave up your advertising career to go into a <laughs> reseller and then you've ended up in, in cyber. But what can we be doing to attract more people into having a career like yourself and getting into, into cyber? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think it comes down to a lot that's done in, in the university system, right? And and even before that in, in high schools or whatever you call them in the UK, I know it's something different, but high schools and and um, and in the university system, I think that if I had been exposed right earlier when I was, you know, 18, 19 years old as, as a career path that, you know, you don't necessarily have to get a CS degree uh, to move into channel sales, particularly within technology. And these were the career options that are available to you. And also, you know, here are some elective classes that are on the side for cybersecurity in particular, which I think are desperately lacking in our university system. I mean. I definitely did not have a choice to go into a cybersecurity, um, any type of module or any type of minor 
when you're tied into a business school. But I think if you, um, you know, if you start diversifying that as a career option, particularly in the university systems, uh, I think I think that's the way uh, to build the leaders of the future, right? And to get more people involved and more people, I guess, excited about going into channel sales um, after they've graduated. And my last question, Brian, there, there'll be a lots of listeners in the UK and, and abroad that'll be listening to, to your um, podcast and thinking, well, that's great, but the current headwinds in the global economy, how's that impacting business? How can that malware bytes help me with that? What, is, is, is some of those sort of the challenges, the headwinds are affecting your business at all in 2023 or is it full steam ahead? Full steam ahead for us, although, I mean, it's it's no secret. I think if you just scroll the headlines on LinkedIn, uh, you can absolutely tell um, what's going on in terms of our headwinds just in the technology sector in general right now, right? What's going on with the global economy has absolutely tampered that. Um, but what I can say is, is this definitively is, you know, the VP of our MSP program. Um, we are always starved and we are always looking for great and talented people whether you're an SE, whether you're an AE, whether you're a CAM, whether you're a CDM, um, I'm always looking for talent, right? And I'm always looking for the next opportunity um, for somebody to come in here and, and I guess, hustle in a way that they've never hustled before. And I, I, know, I know this for a fact, and I'm sure, Mark, you'd agree with me, is that there's, you know, there's some things that you can train, there's some things that you can manage, but you know, some of those things that are intangibles, like your attitude and your work ethic, are, are things that are, are things we look for, right? When we're hiring for channel salespeople and you can learn the technology, you can learn the product over time, particularly when you're in a sales role, um, speaking specifically for sales. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're always hiring and we are always looking and desperate uh, for great talent. So I, I, uh, I wouldn't give up on that front, especially in this economy. Um, we are still trucking full steam ahead. Brian, you've been a great guest.